After the fall of Laos in 1975, the Hmong people, who fought alongside the Americans in the Secret War of Laos, began seeking refuge in America. This is the story of a Hmong refugee girl who followed her American dreams to become a Minnesota State House representative. Tell us your name. My name is Kali Vang Her. My Hmong name is Ngao Li. Did that work? Hello? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What's your parents' name? Uh, my parents' name, so my father's name is Jutsu Vang, and my mother's name is Njoav Yang. And um, where were you born? I was born in Laos, and I can never remember the city that I was born in, but, I, but that city is underwater now. I, I think it's, uh, I can't remember the city. I'll have to tell you later. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember the city I was born in. And um, what year did you guys come to the United States? We came in 1977. Okay. And what year were you born? I was born in 1973. Okay. So tell us about growing up in uh, Laos and Thailand. I actually have very few memories of Laos and Thailand. So from what I understand, I was born in Laos and uh, after the fall of Vietnam and uh, America evacuated Laos, my family uh, left uh, Laos and went to Thailand. I was three at the time. So I turned four in the refugee camps and uh, we made our way to America and I have very brief memories. I mean, it's, they're really silly memories, but just a memory of playing in a cave with my sister and uh, also just this pair of shoes that for some reason there's this little red bow. And I remember that little pair of shoes because um, my sister and I were the only two that had shoes in the camp, but I had sandals and she had this pair of really pretty um, shoes that were high heel. And for some reason, one side of that shoe made it to us, with us to America and the other side did not. But that's all I remember. <laughs> I don't have a lot of memories of Laos. Do you remember your trip to America? You know, I don't, and you know, I think a lot about like why I have such few memories because I actually had a really good memory. I have memories of when I when we came to America, but I don't have memories of like the trip. And I, I sometimes I, I trip. I think that really that's attributed to um, trauma. Um, but I remember um, going to preschool. I remember preschool in um, going to school in Illinois, uh, in Chicago. There was the first place that we went to had a big slide, and I remember the slide, and I remember. Um, going to preschool in Ottawa, Illinois, and uh, just that they had we had to have nap time. And as kids who grew up in a country in which there was no such thing as set schedule or nap time, I always thought that was the most odd thing was they forced us to nap every day in preschool. And I remember thinking that was very odd. So my father I did, actually worked really hard and he always told us that if you wanted respect and you wanted people to, um, to treat you well, that you had to finish your education. And so my father believed that whether you were a woman or um, man or you know you were uh, the education was going to help you regardless and I think that too because my grandmother experienced such hardship she actually taught us girls because in our family there were girls born first before there were any boys and my grandmother always taught us that um, you should never re you should never rely on a man that everything that you do you should be self-sufficient and so with my father's desire for all of us to be educated and my grandmother's desire for us to be um, independent that that led us all down a path of education and so it was never uh, not an option for me to go to college. That um, I never believed that getting married with all of my uh, female uh, friends and uh, relatives, I never believed that marriage was actually going to be something that I, that I would um, have at a young age. And so I focused on my education. I went to school in public school system and um, my parents didn't know how to navigate that with us. So my sisters and I pretty much raised us in the school system and also my younger brothers and sisters. Um, and then that eventually just led us all to going to college. And my sisters became engineers. I ended up with an undergraduate in finance. And, um, you know, and from there, we all sort of took off in our careers and then furthered our education with graduate degrees. So um, what do you do now for work? So I am a state legislator. I am uh, a Minnesota state representative and I'm also the House Majority Whip. And uh, I work for the state of Minnesota and I make laws. I would have to say, can I tell you a little bit about my career path? I think that that might be a little important. Sure. So um, I think that I took a very non-traditional path to get to this job. I actually graduated with an undergraduate in investments, finance, and banking. 
and I was probably the first Hmong person to graduate with a finance degree. Um, and I actually spent 15 years in the private sector doing investments and finance work. Um, you know, when you grow up in a family, uh, a refugee family, you don't have the privilege of thinking about what do you love and what are your passions. Uh, you look for something that you can do and then get out and make some money so you can start helping your family out or to be independent so your family doesn't have to take care of you. So for many years, I did that work and I was really good at it, but I knew that that's not where my heart was with the work that I was doing. And uh, when I had children, I remember thinking to myself that my children will never have the struggles that I did, which means that they will never be forced to succeed for the same reasons I did. And so I remember thinking to myself, like if I wanted them to learn how to follow their passion, I would have to figure out what that meant. So I made a business proposal and I presented it to my husband, how we could live on one income because I wanted to raise our kids. And um, I put a financial plan together and I wrote up all of my goals and objectives and he said, okay, we, we can do it. And I think that the magnitude of what that, that decision was, I think it's really difficult for most people to understand that when you grow up poor, and um, you're the first generation to succeed, if you want to give up one income and a six-figure income, it is really difficult for the community to, to accept that or to understand why you would do such a thing. And I, but I knew that I had to invest in my children. And um, so I stayed home. I was a stay-at-home mom for many years. And from there, it was really the work that I was doing in school every single day with them. I would walk them, make them breakfast every day, walk them to school, and then I would volunteer in their classrooms. And I remembered seeing uh, how challenging it was for my children to get the education that they, they deserved. And so I remember thinking that like I couldn't just fight for my own children, that if I'm going to be fighting, I should fight for everybody's children. And at the same time, I was also caring for my mother who was going through a difficult medical situation and how difficult it was that um, the reimbursements and the insurance and how that all worked and how we had to figure out if labs were done in-house or sent out. And I thought, how, how are patients supposed to know this? I'm educated and I'm having a difficult ne time navigating the system. And for my mother, a $40 difference in what she was paying meant that she wouldn't have groceries that week. And I just thought about all of the parents out there who um, didn't have people fighting for them. And I thought, um, you know, I need to do something with my life. And what matters to me is fighting for people who don't always have the voice you know, a voice at the table. And so that's why I ran for office. And it was actually through my life experience that I actually found uh, my passion and I actually um, realized that the work that I'm doing now has been the greatest honor of my life to do this work and um, I hope that whatever journey I went on that my children saw enough of that journey that they will also be able to find their way into doing things that they love.